Hey class, um, I wanted to make a help video for this pretty tricky homework question that you have for tonight. So, um, what we have here is we have this big kind of crane here that has a rotating drum that's going to rotate supplying a torque, a counterclockwise or positive torque, that generates a tension in this cable here. I'm going to call this T1. And that tension then is going to cause this crate over here to accelerate upwards with a certain uh, value given in the problem statement. So now, in this problem though, there's one small difference from what we were used to. See, the, the tension in the cable, T1, that's the same tension as pulling here, but the pulley is not a massless pulley. As we can see, it's actually a very large pulley, and therefore we can no longer ignore its rotational, in a, re, rotational inertia the way we have in the past. And so since it has a moment of inertia, what's going to actually happen is something we haven't seen yet, and the two parts of this cable, before and after the pulley, will actually have different tensions. So over here, I'm going to call this T2, in this portion of the cable, which is going to be a different value than T1 because of the inertia of the pulley. So to solve this problem, what you need to do is you actually need to take and look at each of these different pieces independently. So you can start by looking at the crate, then you can look at the pulley, and then you can also look at the drum and deal with them each by themselves, putting it all together like we've done with, you know, an accelerating cart and a drop mass and lap, that type of situation, only now we have to combine torque and linear motion. So let's just kind of go through this a little bit quickly together. So if we look at the crate, it's going to have T2 pulling up, it's going to have its weight going down, and that's it, right? And then it'll be accelerating upward. So if we do some of the forces for the crate in the y direction, we know they have to equal ma since it's accelerating up, so we'd get T2 minus mass of the crate times g equals mass of the crate times a. So while we don't know t2, or didn't, we can find it by realizing it's going to be equal to ma plus mg for the crate. Great, so we can find t2 because ultimately, right, the problem's asking us what is the torque on this drum? But in order to know the torque on the drum, we need to know t1, and in order to find t1, we have to know t2. So now if we look at the pulley, what's the pulley got going on? So it's going to have T2 pulling down here, and then it's also going to have T1 pulling in this direction. So if you notice, T2 is going to be generating a negative torque on the pulley, while T1 is going to be generating a positive torque. And so now as we look at the pulley, we're going to have to set up some of the torque on the pulley equals I times alpha. So for both tensions, the lever arm distance is just going to be the radius of the pulley. It's perpendicular in both directions, even though it's, um, or excuse me, it's the perpendicular distance for both torques, even though they're pulling in different directions. So the positive torque from tension 1 is going to be T1 times R. The negative torque is from T2, but its magnitude is T2 times R, and that equals I for the pulley, and so since the pulley is a solid cylinder, we would have one half m r squared for the pulley and then multiplied by alpha. One of the tricks though, what's, what's alpha, right? Okay, if we, if we are trying to find T1 in order to finally get to the torque on the drum, we need to know alpha, right? Well, again, we know that the acceleration of the crate will be the same as the acceleration of the cable. And so for the cable, the acceleration is going to just be equal to alpha times r, or alpha is going to be equal to the tangential acceleration of the cable over r, and the tangential acceleration of the cable is just going to be equal to the acceleration of the crate. So we can actually plug in the crate's acceleration. The same a from up here is going to be the a in our equation, alpha equals a over r, so we can pop this in over here as well. So once you do that, you can get an equation that will give you T1 because you know all the other variables, and then you can move on to looking at the drum. And for the drum, you're going to do the same basic process where you now have T1 pulling on the drum, generating a negative torque, 
and then you're also going to have a positive torque from the motor which we could just call t or tau sub m or something torque of the motor so for the drum you're again going to do the same process you did for the pulley look at some of the torque equals i times alpha but now there's going to be an unknown positive torque the torque of the motor which is what you're trying to find minus the torque caused by tension one which is going to be t1 times r and this is the radius for the drum which is um, the same as that of the pulley okay but if these were different sizes you'd need different radius values that correspond to the object that you're looking at so you got the torque from the motor minus the torque from the tension equals i times alpha now i for the um, drum if you notice it's it's a hollow cylindrical drum so a hollow cylinder or a hollow shell right your moment of inertia is just m r squared and then for alpha of the drum we can do the same game that we did with the pulley so instead of alpha we can do the acceleration of the crate which is the same as the acceleration of the cable over r where all of these are r's of the drum so from there you should in theory be able to solve for the torque that the motor is generating it's a tricky one right three big steps but you solve for t1 then you solve for t2 then you can get the unknown torque so i hope that helps and i hope you all have a box worthy evening